Hi, everybody. I'm so sorry. We had some technical difficulties there. Uh, just bear with us throughout the stream. I'm hoping that it's just going to behave, but just bear with us if anything goes wrong. Hopefully it won't. So hello, I'm so excited you're all here and I cannot wait to get stuck into this workshop with you. Uh, we're just going to wait a, a couple of minutes while people flood into the stream. Uh, but while we wait, let's chat. <laughs> so my name is Emma and I run a community on uh, Instagram called Polymer Clay Loves, full of amazing polymer clay makers. I'm from the UK and like many others, I discovered uh, polymer clay during lockdown. I'd absolutely love to know where you're from, so let me know in the chat. <laughs> speaking of chat, we have some amazing moderators. I know they've been speaking to you already, um, and they will be answering at your polymer clay related questions. So if you have any burning questions that you've always wanted to ask, now is your time. Um, we'll also have a quick Q&A session at the end. Oh, sorry, with me. I've got a little screen behind me, so I remember everything that I say. So I don't want to, I don't want to not give you guys information. So there'll be a short Q and A session right at the end, um, and that's where you can ask me anything personally. If you, you know, the questions for me, if you have anything to ask me personally. So if you do, just drop your question in the chat at the end of the stream. So I just want to say a really big thank you to the Fine Rose team for this opportunity. It's so so incredible to just be working with the, with them on this and to be collaborating with them on this. I've been using Stettler stationery since I was a little kid, so this feels unreal for me. And I, I don't know about you, but I am obsessed with stationery. I cannot walk past a supermarket aisle or a hobby craft without checking out stationery. I'm just obsessed with it. Drop a me in the chat if you're obsessed with it too. So just a little bit about Fimo for those of you who don't know. There are many varieties of fine eye modelling clay suitable for every use and all age groups and uh, from children all the way up to professional users. There's FIMO Kids, FIMO Soft, FIMO Effect, FIMO Professional, FIMO Leather Effect and FIMO Air, which is an air dry clay. So a huge variety of products for everyone. So today we're going to be using FIMO Soft and we're going to be creating three different hoop styles. So I'll just quickly show you what we'll be creating. This is, oh, this is the first one. I hope you can see it properly. This one is um, the Matisse inspire, inspired hoop earring. And you, I think we all know that the Matisse, um, the Matisse uh, designs have just been blowing up everywhere. It's such an awesome um, style. So I definitely wanted to include that in the workshop today. We're also going to be making these cute floral hoops as well and what I love about these is that we're going to be using the sandpaper texture. I don't know if you can see the, the texture properly but it has um, a, a sandpaper texture on it and if you're familiar with the polymer clay world you'll know that this texture has blown up. <laughs> it's taken the polymer clay world by storm and every time I see it it just looks incredible. Hi, are we back? It froze for me. I don't know if it froze for you guys. I hope it's OK. Moderators, let me know in the chat if, if it's OK on your side. Um, I'll carry on. So the last thing that we're going, the last pair that we're going to be making is this really cute multicolored pair. Um, I just love this because it's awesome. You can use uh, your scrap clay and, you know, all uh, you can use yeah your scrap clay. And what I love is that you can um, about these hoops is that you can just create so many different things and just chop and change, you know, with your outfit. So that's what we'll be creating today. Of course, I'll be sharing some color recipes with you as well as some tips and tricks to help you along the way. So here's what we're going to need for today. I love that how this thing is just like right there. Um, <laughs> here's what we're going to need for today. We're going to need uh, one block of Fimo Soft Indian Red, one block of uh, Fimo Soft uh, White, um, and sorry, Indian Red, the colour reference is 24, um, and White, uh, the colour reference is zero. 
We're also going to need lemon, which the colour reference for that is number 10. Uh, we're also going to need three pairs of earring hoops. That's this little part here. And then the fish hooks as well. Now, depending on what country you're in, um, I think there was a link to some different hoops for depending on where you are. So, um, and I know some of those hoops don't need fish hooks. So if you don't have them you and you don't need them, that's absolutely fine. It just depends on, on what kind you brought. So we're also going to need some small round clusters with a diameter of one centimetres and three centimetres. Alternatively, you can just use whatever, um, whatever you have around your house. That might be a glue stick cap um, or just whatever you can find around your house. That's absolutely fine. I need to remember to look here. I'm looking here at the screen, but you're here. So I need to remember to look here. So you're also going to need to have... Uh, well, the rest of this stuff you should actually have around your house, so that's really great. We're going to need a uh, tissue blade. This is um, a FIMO tissue blade. Uh, we'll need an exacto knife or scalpel. We'll need a toothpick or a small needle to make holes. We'll need an oven, of course, an oven tray, a baking sheet, a pencil, some scissors, a piece of low grit sandpaper. That's what we'll, we'll be using to create our awesome texture later. And we will also need two pieces of card um, and we've got an acrylic roller here. If you don't have one, that's absolutely fine. You can just use a glass bottle that will also work. Um, two small pliers, uh, as two small ceramic tiles to keep your clay flat in the oven and avoid bubbles. And I'll, I'll speak to you a bit more about that later. And um, just a reminder, there's going to be so much information in this stream. So if don't worry if you miss anything, we're going to be sending you a link after the stream. So just uh, you can watch the replay and just look out for that. So now that I've gotten through all of that, we can start going. Let's let's do this. Uh, bear with me. I just need to move this camera up so that you've got the bird's eye view of what's happening. So bear with me. Uh, I just need to swap the screen. Oops. Okay. Right, I can see that it's upside down. So one second, bear with me while I just quickly fix that. And it needs... And... Bear with me. Okay, that looks fine. It does look a bit blurry though, doesn't it? Let me just quickly wipe my camera. Bear with me. I think we need to just quickly get this in focus. So, uh, all these technical issues. If anyone knows how to get a camera in focus, please let me know. Uh, let's have a here. Okay. Is that okay for you guys? Kind of looks a bit blurry to me. Is it okay? All right, lovely. I've just had my assistant, aka my husband, give me the thumbs up to say that it's okay, it's not blurry, so I'm just going to keep going. Right, so the first thing we're going to be doing is making, actually, before we do that, let's start, let's talk about cleaning, because we all know that dust is such an issue when we're creating, when we're, sorry, bear with me, okay. I think it's, oh, it does look a bit blurry, doesn't it? Sorry, guys, bear with me. I'm not sure why it's doing that. Sorry, bear with me, guys. I'm just going to try and, because I want you to be able to see this. Uh, come on, focus. If I put something in the view.
I think we're back. Okay, and it looks focused now. Thank you for those of you who um, said to put something in the middle of the table. Yeah, that, I think that looks a lot better. Okay, all right, lovely. Is that, I think it's um, upside down. Bear with me, guys. This is my first live stream, so please do bear with me. All right, I think that that should be fine now. Thank you to my assistant over there. <laughs> All right, so let's talk about cleaning our work surface. The, okay, let's just be honest, it's impossible to remove dust. It's just impossible. You're not going to be able to get away with having at least a little bit of dust in your clay. But there are things that you can do to minimize it. So what I like to do is a couple of things. I use wet wipes to just go over my surface um, and then I might go over it with a kitchen towel afterwards. I also like to use these lint rollers as well just to get any dust off of my hand and I like to go over my surface as well with it as, uh, sometimes. Another thing I like to do is I've got this piece of scrap clay here which I also like to use. Um, and you can just roll that in your hand, get, that gets rid of any dust. You can also do it on your work surface as well. And also you can be mindful of the clothes that you're wearing as well, depending on what color. Say you're using white, maybe just wear a lighter, um, a lighter color, you know, to stop those darker dust part particles from getting into your clay. So now that we've spoken about cleaning the space, we're gonna talk about conditioning and I'm just going to open this pack of white and I don't know about you guys but when I get clay I tend to just rip it open with no regard <laughs> but I recently worked out uh, that there's actually a like a little tab here and you can just open it really nicely like that um, and what it does is just preserves the packaging and what's really awesome is that there's a sticker on the back here that you can also use um, I usually just pull it off and then when I've got any leftover clay I'll just um, wrap it back up peel the sticker off and just use it to um, secure to secure it I'm just going to quickly pull up YouTube so I can see what you're seeing okay so when we're conditioning clay the reason why we do that is just to get it to a, a, a workable state um, and we just want to get it kind of nice and soft so it's easy to mold and um, and you know just so that it's nice and workable so I'm gonna condition by hand and I'm just gonna quickly roll this out I might chop it in half actually I feel like I was being a bit too ambitious there I'm gonna chop it in half and what you don't want to do is um, you don't want to trap any air in the clay so try not to be folding and folding instead um, try to roll because that will just kind of stop any air from getting into the clay so I like to roll fold and twist roll fold and twist and there are other ways that you can do it um, you can also pop this in a sandwich bag and then put some uh, put the sandwich bag in some warm water and just leave it for a few minutes and that will soften up the clay as well. Um, so that's another way that you can do it. But I was taught when I first started that you know your clay is conditioned well when you can pull it apart and it comes to a point. Um, which I think is a really cool way of, of just double checking whether it is conditioned. And thankfully, this clay isn't doesn't take too much work to get conditioned. So now that I've done that, I'm actually just going to roll this out by hand. Um, and here is the reference for the earring that we're going to make. So I'm going to roll this out by hand. And when you're rolling out by hand, um, the most important thing to remember if you're trying to get um, a sheet of even thickness is to use, you can use a popsicle stick, you can use pencils, you just need to make sure that they are the same thickness on either side. I'm just using post-it notes here and I say that this is about um, probably about two to three millimetres thick on either side. So I'm just going to roll this out now. And I probably shouldn't have made it that thin. <laughs> so I'll just do that. Okay, there we go. That's giving me 
a nice surface of clay to work with. I'm just going to pull these out a little bit more. And when you're working with white clay, again, it's so hard to keep the dust out. I mean, this packet has only been open for two seconds and already I'm seeing bits on it. Just don't forget to kind of clean your rollers um, and you can pick things out. You know, earlier today I was going, I had loads of um, dust on the surface of my clay. So I actually was scraping it with my, with my uh, blade. And that's a really great way to get some, to get the, um, the dust off as well. Now you might get some bubbles and that's completely normal. I'm just gonna pop this one here. Just pop them and smooth them over and that will help you to not get so many bubbles when you're baking. Okay, so when you're at a thickness that you're happy with, I think that looks pretty good. I'm just going to quickly remove these. And what I'm going to do is I'm just I'm not going to cut all the way through. This is my three centimeter um, cutter. I'm not going to cut all the way through. I'm simply just going to make an imprint so I know you know that's where the earrings are going to be. And I'm just going to set this aside for now. And I'll use my blade to pick it up. Sometimes um, clay can be really really soft. And I haven't done that very well because it's so extra soft. OK, so look at that. <laughs> it's now turned into an oval. When your clay is um, really, really soft, um, what you can do is actually leach the clay. Um, and what that does is it just puts it, you can put it in between two pieces of paper and leave it for maybe half an hour. And it just kind of extracts the oil out of it. Um, I've just quickly run that through my pasta machine just um, to save some time, but I'm going to quickly just imprint that again. And I'm just going to set it to the side. OK, so now we're going to do some color mixing, which I'm really excited about, and we're going to make uh, some pink. So for that, we're going to need some white. And I'm just going to quickly run this through my pasta machine just for time time's sake um, and the most important rule when you're color mixing is that you just want to make sure that every single ingredient is the same thickness so I rolled these all out on my pasta machine and they're um, I think they're zero thickness you want to make sure that all your color ingredients are the same thickness and you want to make sure that you're using the same cutter for all of them so this recipe is three white and one quarter red so I'm just going to quickly cut three white. I'll just quickly run that through the machine again. And then just do this third white. And we need a quarter red. So one thing to remember, um, of course, it depends on how big your project is, but you can always um you can always double or triple your recipes depending on oh it's a bit shaky we've got a bit of an earthquake there um you can always uh double or triple your recipe depending on how much you actually need to make i'm just going to keep it simple um and i'm just going to cut this into a quarter just try and get it as even as you can and i'm just going to set these i'm going to set this aside Ooh. I'll just keep that one there. When you're using an um, a blade, try to aim the blade so it's kind of lightly um, scratching the surface because uh, that will help you to keep your, your clay intact. Okay, so I'm just going to set those aside because we'll use them a bit later. And uh, I'm just going to mix this quickly now. So to mix, we've got our three white and our quarter red. And I'm simply going to just roll this. This is the quickest way to mix it by hand is to do exactly the same as we did when we conditioned is just to roll it into a snake, fold and twist.
So you can see the colors starting to come through here. And you just want to keep doing this um, for as long as you need to until you get to a really consistent color. And so just keep going with that. And eventually you should get to this. Now, look at all of that dust. Can you see? <laughs> I think I must have lent on it with my elbow at some point because there is a lot of dust on there. So I'll quick, quickly show you what I was talking about earlier. Um, I just like to scratch off the top layer like that and just add this to my scrap clay piece so we don't, so it never gets wasted. And then I just run that through the pasta machine and that's nice and clean again. So what we need to do now is um, I'm just actually going to Actually, what I'm going to do is the second recipe. Let's do the second recipe. The second recipe is orange. That's this one here. And to create that one, you're going to need one yellow. So we'll just quickly make one yellow. We need quarter red. So we've got that from last time. And we need half white. So I might just steal this piece here. You can see the red from where I didn't clean my knife. So that's always, um, I'm sorry, my blade. So that's always really great to get into the practice of cleaning your blade as well, just to stop your colors from mixing. Okay, so we need half white. So I'm just gonna cut that as evenly as I can. And I'm gonna put the one yellow, quarter red and half white together and just roll and do exactly the same thing that I showed you before with the rolling, the folding and the twisting. And eventually we will come to this color here. So now that we've got our colors mixed, um, we should get started with the freehand cutting. Now, I don't know if you've noticed or I, I kind of need to show you, I guess, uh, but this, the white part is a lot thicker. I think that's roughly about two to three millimeters, um, but the colored parts are a lot thinner and I just think it kind of gives it a, a nice effect. So if you were rolling by hand, um, you would get your post-it notes and maybe just half them again and then just go over it and, uh, and just roll out a piece as flat as you can. I'm gonna quickly pass these through my pasta machine on setting uh, let's go for setting three, see how that looks. So this is my third setting. And we're going to do some freehand cutting. So what I'm going to do again is I'm just going to make a small imprint um, on both sides. I'm not cutting all the way through, it's just an imprint. Um, because I find it's um, a lot easier to be able to kind of get the scale of the shapes that you're making so you're not making them too big or too small. So I'm going to quickly just cut through these and if you're not sure what kind of shapes to create um, you can always go on Pinterest and have a look or feel free to just kind of copy what I've done as well. Um, please don't laugh at my cutting. <laughs> I'm trying to do this as quickly as I can but when I made these I actually took quite a while because I really wanted to create something pretty so just take your time with it and um, just you know just create shapes that you love um, so when you're cutting with a knife you want to make sure that obviously the blade is in the direction that you're cutting and just take it as, as slowly as you can I'm going to attempt to make that heart shaped one and we'll see how we go with it well, that didn't come out too badly. Uh, and let's just make some teardrops. Uh, I'm just doing random things here at the moment. Sometimes it's fun to just play around and just see what, see what you get. And I'll just do like another straight one. You know, just give yourself like lots of options because you can play around with where everything goes when you start to place your shapes. So I'm just going to quickly do this one as well. Uh, let's 
do a squiggle again. And uh, let's do, oh gosh, shall I attempt the um, this one here? Okay, let's attempt it. I'm actually terrible at creating these ones. The ones with the, the three or four different prongs coming out because they usually look really crazy. Oh, that one didn't come out too badly. Okay. All right, so that I think that should be enough. I'll just do one more here. All right, lovely. So now that I've cut them out, I'm just going to take these off. Oh, it looks like I cut all the way through on this one. And I think I lost one there, so I'll just grab that. And do I lose any here? A little one. Just grab that. Okay. So just put these aside quickly. And we're going to grab our white piece of clay now. Um, I just start to place them really. Um, oh, I think I just made a little scratch in there. So what I like to do is sometimes, cause sometimes they can look a bit untidy from you know how you've cut it. If it does, just turn it around, and you know you might on the other, it might look a bit neater on the other side. And just feel free to like. Um, smooth your clay out as well as you're going, just to give it, um, just, just to kind of neaten it up. I'm just gonna neaten that up because it had a bit of a random bit there. Um, I'm placing these quite lightly because I will probably move some at some point. I guess I'm just trying to get a feel for where I want everything to go at, the, at this point. So I'll just pop that one there. How's everybody doing? I can't even see the chat because I'm not wearing my glasses. <laughs> oh, goodness me. Let's see. I'm looking forward to the Q&A at the end. If you do have any questions to ask me, then uh, let me know. Thankfully, we have the moderators to help you with any clay related questions that you have. So definitely, um, definitely make use of them as well. And don't forget that there's a replay. Um, so if you miss anything or um, if you wanna just kind of go over things again, I did go through the recipes pretty fast there. Um, you can always go back and just kind of get an, uh, remember, just see what, um, what uh, proportions I mentioned. So I'm just gonna keep going, we're almost there. See if I can get this one in. This one's a little bit big, so I might say goodbye to him. Um, let's try this one here. But I just love how you can kind of play around and just put things in random places. Do you know what, let me just, I'm gonna put you over here as well because I actually forgot to say uh, what's really important is to make a hole. So I'm gonna make a hole up here. And this is um, actually from FIMO. They kindly sent this to me. This is actually a bead tool uh, that you use to pierce beads with. Um, and it comes in this packet full of different sizes, which is really cool. So thanks for sending that over. Um, so you want to make your hole because obviously you don't want to cover your hole with the shape um, and you don't need any kind of fancy tools when you're starting out. You can just kind of um, use what you have around. Okay, I think that's the right shape to go on there. It's a shame that we don't have, shall I just cut a tiny shape? because that bit there is just really bugging me. It's just um, nothing that I created fits there. So I'm just going to create a tiny hole. So I like a there. All right. OK, let's say that that's it. I'm now going to just cut through this all the way through. 
I can't remember if I said this to you guys before, but um, obviously keeping your clay white, um, you know, you keep your surface clean, etc. You know, pick bits of dust out if they're really if they're really huge. Um, but also, don't worry too much. We all get you know bits of dust in our clay. You can always use acetone um, once it's actually baked to just. Um, I use 100% acetone and a Q-tip, and I just rub over the um, over the hairs, just and just kind of work the hair out or the the piece of fiber out. Um, so that's a really great way of doing it. Um, also, don't forget to just kind of smooth things over. The more you smooth things over before you bake, the less you'll have to sand. Um, I don't know about you, but sanding is not my favorite thing. So I prefer to just spend the time smoothing things over and just get it to a place that you're really, really happy with. Um, so I don't know. Oh, there we go. So there we go. That's what I've just created. So now what we do is um, we would need to bake it. Um, obviously, I don't have an oven here today because otherwise you'd be here forever. Um, but I'm going to show you how I bake my clay pieces. So I actually use um, a pizza box or a mailbox sometimes. Um, like a, I think it's an A5 mailing box that I sometimes use to you know, put my jewellery in and send it off to customers. Um, it just depends on the size of the project, really. Um, so I've got two different size tiles here. Um, if I'm doing a big project and I've got like, let's say I had like, you know, loads of these, I probably um, would use this one here. And I would just pop some paper on top, pop the, um, the clay piece on top um, like that. And But because they're 3D, I wouldn't actually cover this with another ceramic tile. But what I would do is cover it with some paper um, because when you cover it with paper, it just stops any discoloring as well. Um, so that's how you can bake this one. If you're using, um, if you're just doing like maybe one or two earrings, use a smaller tile and just, you know, cut your paper according to size or your card according to size. Um, and just, you know, you would just sandwich, well, in this case, actually, you wouldn't sandwich it in between. But if you've got a flat piece, you can um, pop your piece of paper, clay, paper, tile on top. And what that does is it just helps to stop the bubbles from coming up and it um, just helps to keep the clay nice and flat. So now that we've supposedly baked them, <laughs> Um, what we would come up with, oh, and just to say that this was just two pieces of A4 card, uh, sorry, a piece of A4 card that I've just cut in the middle just to match the size of my tile a bit better. So obviously we now come to this and once you've baked it, obviously you're just going to sit there and marvel at the incredible work that you've created, but don't forget to assemble it so that you can actually wear it. <laughs> So what, um, these are pretty self-explanatory. You just pull it out of the hole. Um, there's the hole from the piece. So I'm just gonna pop that in. I hope you can see. And then just pop that back in there. Again, depending on what kind of hoops you have, you may not need this hook here. So don't worry if you, if you don't need it. But for this hook, I'm going to just quickly use a pair of pliers. Sometimes it's easier to use two, depends on how you feel really. But I'm just gonna use a pair of pliers just to open that up and then just hook that onto the little um, circle on the, on the end of the hoop. And that little ball always loves to get in the way. So I'm just gonna hold that and uh, use the pliers just to close that up again. Okay, so that is it. That's the first pair, all done, and ready to wear with your summer outfit, or your spring outfit even. So now we shall go on to the next pair, which is this one here with the fun sandpaper texture. Um, and we're going to create that. We don't need to create some uh, recipes for this one because we're just going to use the recipes that we had before. So I'll just leave that there as a reference. And for this one, um, I'm actually just going to make them a little bit thicker. So I'm just going to run these through my pasta machine quickly 
at a setting of zero, which is, uh, I think it's roughly about three millimeters ish, um, obviously. And look, I've got some some bubbles there, so I'm just pop them and smooth them over. Um, I'm just going to run these through my machine because I want the flowers to be a bit thicker. Uh, so I'll just run this through as well. You don't need a pasta machine when you start out at all. You really don't. Um, it does make things a lot quicker and it does help with um, stopping as much dust getting in to your clay. But it's really not necessary when you're starting out. Um, I guess it's more something that you would buy if you know you're going to definitely take it up as a hobby or a business. Um, so now that we've done that, um, the next thing I'm going to do is I just quickly earlier, I just um, cut some flowers out. Sorry, I uh, drew some flowers out. Um, you can print some on paper and then cut it out. You can find something around your home that you love the shape of and just draw around it. Um, this is really a, a cool way of um, like kind of creating your own shapes without having to spend so much on cutters because um, they can get expensive. I have a, an obsession with cutters, but this is a really fun way to just do it yourself and also just to create original designs. Um, and what you can do is once you cut them, um, you can you can preserve them so that you can use them again by just putting a bit of sellotape over it so that you can use it again. So I'm just going to quickly cut this out and I'm going to do it quickly, but I'm going to try to get the definition in the flower because we don't want to lose that. So just going to do that. And if you don't get the definition, like if your cutting is a bit wonky like mine usually is, <laughs> don't worry because you can, you know, that's clay is all about being molded and shaped. So you can always kind of correct it once you've cut it out. So I'm just going to cut that one out. And instead of cutting that small one out, here's one I made earlier. Always wanted to say that. So um, the next thing I'm going to do, would you believe when we did a test run of this, I actually forgot to do the sandpaper part, which is to me the most important part of this whole thing. So I'm really happy that I actually remembered it this time. If I can find my acrylic roller, wherever it's gone, where have you gone? There you are. Um, right, so this is the sandpaper. This is 120. This is um, a low grit sandpaper. And I'm just going to pop that over the top and just um, roll over it and lift that up. I'll try and see if I can show you. I don't know if you'll be able to see the texture in the camera. I'm hoping you can kind of see the texture there. It's just so, so pretty. And you might get bits of black on the sandpaper, but it's fine. It all adds to the, to the charm of it. Um, so don't worry too much about that. All right, so that's done. Look, there's a pesky hair there. Looks like an eyelash. We'll just ignore it for now. I do not see it. So now what we're going to do is grab our shapes. And again, just use the exacto knife to go around. And just cut the shape. Oops, a daisy. And try not to press too hard because you don't want to, um, you know, get, you don't want to remove the texture that you've created. Okay, so that one should be fine. And then I'll do the smaller one on here, ignoring the eyelash. That is really frustrating me. There you are, eyelash. You are not wanted here. Don't you just find it like the audacity of dust and hairs to get in your clay? Like, how dare you? You are not welcome here. Right, that's that one done. Let's try and pick that up. And I'm just going to lift these up. I'm just holding them aside for now. Okay, so as you can see, it's not perfect by any means. Um, so it just Take your time and just kind of smooth it out. Again, the more you smooth it out now, the less you'll have to sand. 
Um, if you do have to sound though, um, but it sounding can be, it can be a lot more complex than what I'm going to explain here. But you can just go over the edges lightly. And um, this is from this is sounding paper from Primo. Um, and you can just go around the edges lightly, um, just kind of getting rid of any little bits that you don't like. Um, but you can also, when I first started, I didn't really get along very well with sandpaper. Uh, this is before I got my Dremel. And so what I used to do is get acetone and a Q-tip and I used to smooth my clay out that way because it was I don't, it's such a relaxing process. Um, and I just love the way it kind of mattified the clay and also got rid of fingerprints, dust. So that's how I started sanding when I first um, started making um, using polymer clay. I'm just going to quickly um, pat these bits down. And some of the edges aren't defined. So we're going to get our Stettler pencil, which is actually perfect because it has that hexagonal shape. And I'm just going to kind of make it a bit more defined. Again, you'll take your time with this. So you'll get something that you absolutely love, but just time-wise and just um, trying to do this as quickly as possible for you. So don't laugh at my wonky flower. <laughs> so now that I've done that, I'm going to quickly grab my one centimeter cutter. And this is where the cornstarch comes in. So this is my little cornstarch um, pot. And why I love cornstarch is that it just makes life so much easier. Um, so, and to be honest, these cutters, because they're so tiny, it's really easy to just, um, it's really easy. They just pick up everything um, and then it's hard to get out. So I'm just going to pop that in the center as central as I can and on the other one as well. And I actually just want to make this one a little bit more defined. So I'm just going to use my pencil to do that. OK, so I'm just going to grab these. Oops. And um, you know what, this time I'll just use a small one because it's just a small I'm just doing small bits here. So what I would do again is this one's flat, although it has a texture on it, it's going to be fine if you place a tile on top of it, it's not going to get rid of the texture. So for this one, I would again, obviously cut this down to size before you use it with your smaller tile. Um, in fact, I'm just going to do that now. So tile, paper, and so it's a little bit different in the sense that with this one, because it's we want it to come out flat um, and we don't mind about the texture. I'm just going to put that a bit more central so it doesn't get squashed under the other tile. Pop that piece of paper on and then simply pop the other tile on. So it's like a little clay sandwich. And um, then I would just pop that in my um, pizza box and then put it in the oven. Now, um, one thing I forgot to mention is, is uh, well, hardening. We've got to talk about that. That's like one of the most important things. And I can't believe that I forgot to tell you. So FIMO hardens at between 110 and 130 degrees. Um, I personally bake mine at 130 degrees for 30 to 45 minutes. You don't want to go above 130 degrees um, just because it bakes best at 100 degrees. Sorry, at 130 degrees. So you don't need to go above that. What you will 100% need is a thermometer. Um, most ovens don't actually get to the temperature that they say they, they do. Um, so you'll set it to 130 and it might actually be 120. And what a um, oven thermometer does is just make sure that it really is at the right temperature. So you want to make sure that your oven is preheated before you put your clay in, get it to uh, 130, that's my personal preference. And then I would just put it in there for about 30 to 45 minutes. And what that will do is that will help you to just achieve a, um, just a nice flexible, um, but strong piece of uh, piece of clay. And what you can also do is you can do the bend test. I don't have a piece of clay that I can, oh, maybe I can do it with this, I'm not sure. 
No, it's a bit too small, but you can do the bend test. Um, and what that is, is you'll know if it's baked properly, if you can bend it with your hand, but not, but it doesn't snap. Obviously you don't want to bend it, you know, and force it because it will snap. But if you can kind of bend it slightly and it has that flexibility and it comes, it's kind of springs back into its normal shape, then you've baked it really well. If you are getting any breakage at all, it will be, um, it will be to do with your temperature or your timing. So just make sure that you, you know, you're really aware of that. And, you know, feel free to use a tester as well. And, you know, just do a test piece and, you know, test it for yourself. I remember when I first started, I baked, underbaked so many. Um, and, yeah, it's just, it's not fun. So <laughs> try to bake at the right temperature if you can. So now that I've done that, uh, we've put it in the oven and then we arrive at this beauty here. So I showed you how to assemble these before, so I won't go through the whole thing with you again, but it's just simply pop these on. And what I love about this is, you know, you can make this really cool and just do like polka dots, um, all kinds of different shapes, terrazzo, you can do so many different things and you can make so many different colors and just swap them out, you know, according to your outfit. So that is the second pair. So we're gonna come to the last pair now. And um, what are we going to do? We need to make some color recipes again. So these are our final two color recipes. And for these color recipes, we're going to need, we're gonna make a peach and it's two yellow quarter red and two white. So I'm just going to quickly grab, oh, oh yeah, I just dropped a piece of clay on the floor. Um, so it's two yellow. Got our two yellow there. We'll grab our quarter red that we had from earlier. And I'm just gonna quickly run this through the pasta machine and we'll just create one white. Bear with me. Okay, I've taken the um, blades off of my pasta machine. It makes it so much easier to clean. It's incredible. Okay, so what was that that we needed? We needed two whites. I'm just gonna quickly make two white. And then again, we just pop them together. Is, is anyone like me where you have to say the ingredients like 10 times to make sure you've really done it properly? So two yellow, quarter red, two white. It's a bit like when you're leaving the house and you're like, I have turned off the iron. I've definitely turned it off. You have to say it to yourself to, you know, to really just get it in your head that you did it. You did it right. Um, so, Exactly the same as I showed you before. Roll, twist, roll, twist, fold, roll, twist. And you will get to this colour here, which is so, so pretty. Just get rid of that cornstarch. Um, absolutely love this colour. It's so, so pretty. And then what we're going to need to do is just make the last colour, which is nice and simple. That one is... Uh, one white and half yellow. We're going to be making a yellow. So I'm just going to run this through the pasta machine again and just do one white and half yellow. Um, I think we can use the end of that, that's fine. Okay, lovely. Just cut that in half. Oh, that is not a good half. That was a really poor half. Okay, <laughs> so we've got half and one white. And again, mix as we did with the other ones and you will get to this colour here. So now that we've got our colours, I'm actually just going to grab the other ones as well. And I kind of really love this texture. Originally, I just kept it, the texture, just, you know, plain. Um, but I'm going to use the texture from what we just made before because it's actually really pretty. Um, so I'm going to do that. And for this one, we definitely will need our cornstarch because 
um yeah this cutter just really enjoys upsetting me and taking my clay with it so with the um cornstarch you can just use your finger and it just really helps the clay to you know it, it helps the clay to a pick, not pick up fingerprints um but b just not get stuck in your cutters as well um i sometimes just like to use a brush to find it a bit quicker uh kind of looks a bit messier though doesn't it and just add that to all of them. Okay, and then I also like to just really, because uh, I just don't trust this cutter at all, I'm just gonna also dip it in here as well. And I've dipped it in so much that it's full of cornstarch now, so bear with me. <laughs> That's me trying to do things quickly. But I've actually just made a mess. So I think for this earring here, um, I think eight's a good number, eight of these on each side. So, uh, and obviously we'll double that for both sides. So four of these. If you do get your clay, like this, if you do get your clay stuck in a cutter, it depends on how big it is. With some cutters, if you've got a big one, you can kind of push it out with your finger or possibly with an exacto knife. I um, I tend to just redo it because I find that whenever I try to get it out, it just in it in some way just distorts. And unfortunately, that's the perfectionist in me. But we don't need perfection. Perfection is not, you know, it's not necessary. Just need to do our best. And look, it's happened again. So I'm just gonna take that out that one's actually okay so i'll just leave that one the eyelash there is just taunting me you probably can't even see it but it's just really taunting me okay so now we've cut them out and i'm just going to grab my um where are you little tool my okay well i can't find it oh there it is got it found it my little tool and I'm just going to make some holes so just try and get them as central as you can do this one here um and just take your time with it and just go through all of them one by one Try and make the hole big enough um, as well to get onto your hoop. So just double check what your hoop, the hoop thickness is, just to make sure that your hole is big enough so you're not struggling to get them on. And so now I've done all my holes. Just gonna quickly pop these off. Okay, lovely. And what I would now do again is just let me just grab this, grab my tiny tile, because my work is tiny. Let's get rid of them. And don't worry if you, I mean, you can blow the cornstarch off if you need to, but if you bake it with the cornstarch on, it's fine. It, it'll come off once it's baked. So don't worry too much about that. Um, now, usually, if I was on my own, I'd line these up perfectly so they look pretty going into the oven, even though only I can see it. It's kind of pointless, but um, I would line them up all perfectly. And then I would grab the other piece of paper, which I'll do in just a second. Come on. Obviously you want to spread them out a little bit so they don't stick together. Uh, grab my piece of paper, ta-da, and pop my tile over. Put that in my um, pizza box, pop it in the oven that should be already preheated to um, 130 degrees in my case. So that is how you make that. And once they come out of the oven, you'll have these little bits here. And it's just simply a case of popping them all on. And Let's try and alternate these. So 
make it a bit prettier. I need to slow down. I'm trying to do this quickly for you guys, but actually all I'm doing is um, making life harder for myself. So I'm just gonna slow down, try and get these on. Oh, we're almost there. What one should I do next? Let's just do this one. And lastly, okay. It is a bit fiddly because there's so much on the hoop, but you can just, you know, move them aside and just pop them back into the hole there. Uh, you might have to press a bit hard. This one, I think, because I've opened it so many times, I've lost the shape of it. Um, but this is what you should end up with here. Our multicolored, perfect for spring and summer hoop, ready to wear and look gorgeous in. So that is all of the earrings. I can't believe how quickly that's just gone. Um, <laughs> that is all of the earrings. Um, so I'm just going to quickly move my camera back onto me so I can have a quick chat with you as we end the stream. Bear with me. Okay. Oh, I'm upside down. Hello. <laughs> Uh, let me just, oh, can I just do that? Yeah, I can just do this. Okay, great. Okay, hi, everyone. Thank you so much for sticking with me and um, through all the technical issues. Thank you so much. It's been so awesome to spend time with you. Um, I just want to, yeah, thank you and the FIMO team for putting this workshop together and for you guys for being here. I hope you enjoyed it as much as I've enjoyed it. And we've got just enough time for a quick Q&A session. So if you have anything that you personally want to ask me, um, just drop your questions in the chat and um, I will go through them. Whilst I'm waiting for the questions to come in, I'm just going to give you a quick reminder that there is going to be a replay. So don't worry if it went too fast or, you know, if you miss anything, just have a look in your emails. Uh, I think it's going to be sent today. Just keep a look out for them. Um, also, don't forget to check out www.stetler.com. They've got some awesome polymer clay projects on there that you can follow and lots of tips and tricks on there as well. So definitely check that out. Um, Let's see. Oh, and there's also free colour recipes on there. I've collabed with them and created some free colour recipes for you guys. So definitely check them out as well. Um, don't forget to check us out on IG and feel free to tag us in your amazing creations. We would love to see what you create. Um, just search Fimo Stetler on IG and Polymer Clay Loves on IG. That's loves with an S on the end. Um, and yeah, DM us, tag us. If you've got any questions, feel free to drop in. We'd love to... Um, <laughs> love to help you so I just got um distracted by the chat there okay so let's see if we have any questions I'm just gonna quickly grab my laptop here and just quickly see oh, I'm so glad you guys enjoyed it um for an 11 year old YouTube channel what ideas do you recommend making oh that's a good question um I, I'm assuming is it jewelry that your 11 year old wants to make um I would say kind of just like whatever she she or he gravitates towards um I would say definitely look at Pinterest because there's so much inspiration on there and maybe just try out some things that you see on there. Um, polymer clay is so, so um, popular at the moment. So you're always going to find people that just love to watch the content. So just really enjoy it and feel free with it and don't overthink it too much because I always find that when you're making something you love, um, that's when you know you find your people and that they'll you know follow you and just enjoy what you're creating um let's see if there's any other questions uh how do you come up with your oh okay color recipes so when i first decided that i wanted to do color recipes i actually learned color theory um 
I learned color theory before I did anything else and um, just basically learned how to combine the primary colors to create other colors. Um, so definitely if you want to create your own pollen clay recipes, just get familiar with color theory. There's loads of um, there's loads of information online about color theory and using the you know red, uh, blue and yellow and white and you can use black as well. Uh, to create the colours. So definitely check that out. Let's have a look. Um. <laughs> Let's see. Oh, I'm so glad you guys enjoyed the workshop. Um, I'm just going through your messages quickly now. Can you use the rest of the clay if you use cornstarch? Yes, of course you can. You can actually just dust it off or blow it off. It's okay if there's a bit left. It's not a big deal. You can just kind of roll it um, again, put it through your pasta machine, roll it by hand, and it, it's absolutely fine to reuse. That's not a problem. Uh, just having a look at see if there's any other questions. Uh, is a normal baking tray fine or are tiles or I think the moderator might have already answered that one so that's fine. How do you clean all the tools and cutters? So you can use, um, well, if you're using, if you bought um, uh, cutters, um, then the best thing to do is just to wash them with some warm water or a baby wipe or something like that um, it's better not to put any kind of like chemicals on it because I think it can erode the plastic um, but with my other tools I'll uh, either just use again a wet wipe or if it's a really pesky bit of clay that won't come off then I'll use some acetone 100% acetone to get rid of it and I'll just quickly show you the one that I use if I can find it no, it's not here because I did my nails today and it's in the other room. <laughs> but I think it's called, I want to say Maya, but if you um, drop in my DMs at the end, um, I'm, I'll be happy to give you the link to the acetone. Um, thanks for the ideas, Emma. I need to love new world. Oh, that's awesome. Uh, okay. Oh, can I put my Insta name? Oh, thank you for doing that, Caro. Thank you so much. Okay, awesome. So yeah, definitely check us out. Check out FIMO. Check out um, FIMO Settler. Check out me as well. Polymer Clay Loves on IG. Um, and uh, yeah, I'd love to see you. We've got an amazing community of makers. Um, but they're so helpful and so lovely. And it's just a really cool place to kind of get to know other people and stuff. So. That, I think that's all the questions for now. Oh, I think I've just seen one more. Yes, you can watch it back. Don't worry. It's you know, the replay will be available. So that's it for now. I just want to thank you again for joining us. Thank you so much for being here, for sticking through all of the um, technical issues. And, you know, I really hope to be able to do this again with you guys. It's been awesome to hang out with you. Thank you so much. Take care.